Hello everyone! It is time for us to dig deeper. I need a shovel. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, a little 2018 anime film called Oko's Inn, which is a charming little piece of work. Um, it is based on a series of children's novels, which were adapted into a TV anime series uh, a little before that, but I believe this movie is sort of an origin story, it's sort of the, the wrap-up kind of a storyline around uh, Oko Zen. So spoiler warnings, we're going to talk about some of the plot, some of the things that happen in, in, this, in the movie, because I think it is pretty central to understanding it and getting a sense of what, what's going on there. Um, and uh, it's, I got to admit, so uh, you know, John, you recommended this, and I'm so glad you did. Um, it is a, it, it was a lovely experience. Um, it is just, just really, really sweet. Um, but it's, it's a little bit more, a little bit more than that. So what were your guys' reactions, like, as you were watching it? I mean, for me, watching it, I know, um, it started and I got a pretty good sense of the, the tone of it early on, but then it, it evolved from, uh, for me a little bit. How about you, you guys? So I, I went into this uh, knowing absolutely nothing about this anime. That I didn't even know it was a manga until you just said it, uh, or children's stories until you just said it. Um, and so I went into it, and again, it's it's out of my normal anime watching wheelhouse, but uh, that's a good thing because you know you can only watch so much mecha all the time. So <laughs> sometimes you need a refresher, and this exactly. is definitely a refresher. Um, I I enjoyed it. I liked it. It it was. Um, you know, I, I knew what was going to happen, what, what the premise of the story was. That wasn't so much of a shocker when the parents died. It's mm. just like, you know, I wasn't expecting them. Normally when you see something like that, you see like the sound cut to black and maybe a little bit more sound and then something happens and then whatever. No, you get to see like the truck coming at you and, yeah. you know, things like yeah. that. You're just like, which makes sense later on because there's a scene much later on in the movie where she has a PTSD moment. Mm -hmm. And, and, but, you know, so I, Seeing that, I was just like, oh, I, I thought we were going to watch a nice, sweet comedy movie. <laughs> and, and, and then, but, but it did turn into that. It did, it was funny in parts, and it was very, very, very sweet. And, um, I, I, you know, I just, again, I enjoyed it. And part of the reason why I enjoyed it is because, as I was saying earlier to you guys, going to American is something that I actually want to do in my life. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's actually... You know, like I said before, someday when I'm able to get to Japan and have the real countryside in experience, that's that's what I would like to do. So mm -hmm. a large part of this anime was a lot of fun for me, just kind of watching the actual you know, process of it. Mm -hmm. And you know, like and then her training, being the junior innkeeper, and yeah. you know, you know, and one of the things that I thought was kind of neat was one specific point where the hostess, not not her grandmother, but the hostess explains to her, okay, it's six steps to every tatami mat. Mm -hmm. I step on the crack, you know, and there's ways of movement and things like that to, you know, go. It's a, I, yeah. I found all that in, very interesting. And then, the, of course, the story itself, which is, you know, um, about her dealing with, with her parents' lo uh, death, mm -hmm. deaths. And some of those characters were, I was not expecting your view. I was not expecting it, it, that, that, you know, you know, the hard first introduction of him mm. is him flicking boogers at people. Yeah. <laughs> and I was just like going, okay, that's that's a different kind of ghost. That's that's <laughs> wonder what Gyokai classification we would give this guy. <laughs> yeah. and, you know. And and it just went on from that and, and so I, I enjoyed it. I just feel like I probably should watch the anime only because mm. the character of Yuribo, you know, maybe you guys can correct me on this, Yuribo, uh, Mio and What's the bell demon's name again? Suzuki. I Suzuki? cannot tell you. Oh. Yeah, I can't. I can't remember. It might have been Suzuki. Yeah. Suzuki. Mm -hmm. And I just felt like, like particularly with Suzuki, uh, which I really like that little character, but I yeah. just wish there was more mm -hmm. explanation oh. about him, and maybe that. You you could... his constant eating. Yeah. <laughs> like you, you could feel the episodic nature of uh, in, in the bones of this right like you, you could see yeah. where this yeah. was based on a series of, of stories yeah totally mm -hmm. john how about you well, as i yeah. as i had said to you to you uh brent in in messaging mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. there are weaknesses in it i mean you, you don't have a you know a lot of explanation oh how did you pass i fell off a roof <laughs> yeah 
yeah, that's, and that's the I, end of it. And you I, know, it's like yeah. the, the, the posing Ryokan, it's like her ghost is, I just died mm -hmm. when I was seven. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh. Uh, like, <laughs> like, what's the backstory? What, what yeah. Do you mean? Mm -hmm. you, I mean, and, and that's where I think the episodic part comes in. It's like, mm -hmm. yeah, you could see where this would go from week to week, and that you'd have a flashback, and you'd, mm -hmm. you'd see more of what's right. going on in that. But mm -hmm. um, I, I have no idea, honestly, how this came out of things. I don't know if it popped up on my, my anime list mm. to remind me that this movie was finally available, mm. um, or if I was just, just cruising along. Because mm -hmm. after Akira and Momotaro, it was like, okay, you know, maybe you could find something that's, like, not great with the fireflies or barefoot again. Like, maybe we could bring the house up a little bit, get the lights up, get a little bit of, get a little funny going on. Yep. And when I read the description, I'm like, uh, how is this going to be a lot different than Hanasako uh, Iroha? Mm -hmm. How is this going to, is this, you know, uh, is it going to be the same kind of thing? Mm -hmm. And I just launched it gave it a shot and I'm like oh okay she's first of all she's much younger yeah. than Hanasaku mm -hmm. so her perspective is far different mm -hmm. and I don't like you know this is like the Disney thing I, I hate to see the parents oft mm -hmm. like like that um, but I like the way that they explored when they're going shopping and she starts to freak out mm -hmm. yeah. I like that exploration for Hanasaku you know the mom's just a deadbeat yeah and abandons her daughter mm -hmm. to her mother, the daughter's grandmother, and just goes off to be a complete jerk. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's like this, the parents are done in a an artistic style that really felt like Ghibli. Oh, like yes. The father, yeah. the oh. way his hair was, oh. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> it's, it's, the wind also it's, rises. I'm like, that's the hairdo. I, Totally. Her mother reminded me of some of the the facial and hairstyle, mm. no joke, of Yamato. Uh, yes, yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And yes. I'm like, what is going thinking, on there? <laughs> I was thinking, uh, I was thinking, seventies anime when I saw her. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When they started, so it's like, honor, like these are really wow. interesting sort of homage pieces to things. It's like the grandmother's facial expressions sometimes also have some of the Ghibli kind of face, mm -hmm. kind of expression. Mm -hmm. So this was a, you know, I, I we had finished up talking about Momotaro. Sunday came. I was just sort of kicking around. I watched a few episodes of this. I watched two, a little bit more of Two Love Rue again. I watched mm. another couple episodes of Ergo Proxy. Mm. And then struck on this, and I was just like, gosh, I I laugh. I cry. The, <laughs> how do you flick ghost boogers? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure how that goes. Um, the opposing Ryokan. Yeah. If the girl had had blonde hair with big twirls, <laughs> I'd be like, this is the character that everybody calls Drills. That's the you know, thing, I mean, that, yes. That character type. So it's oh, like, man. This is just a comfortable show with some really nice sweetness to it. Mm -hmm. Weaknesses in storyline. Sure. But it's not disastrous to the progression. It, it just it feels nice. You get every kind of emotion along the board. And it comes out nicely. Well, it's and, just like, oh, thank you. <laughs> and, and I think those weaknesses are are, are almost are, are well, really are kind of ignorable. It's one of those things where yeah. you're watching the movie and you're like, oh, I hope we, you know, I hope we find out what happened to to this character. I hope we find out what happened to this character. It's never addressed, but and it's like I I would have liked to have seen that, but it doesn't like really detract from the overall story. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Maybe but, for the for your ghost pals, you don't. I mean, you don't really have a great intro to exactly why mm -hmm. are they there you know do we address anything it's like oh they have unresolved regrets yeah. and i mean the opposing the opposing ghost girl <laughs> for the opposing inn she was seven yeah you know what i mean <laughs> you don't really have a lot of regrets in the in the way of seven the opposing mm -hmm. ghost boy okay he was yeah. a little bit older he had had an attachment to the grandmother. So, yeah. you know what I mean? You could say, oh, you know, I see the red yeah. string of fate kind of thing where totally. you're attached to the grandmother and hence you followed her on. Mm -hmm. Other girl, it's like. Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. And she's it been. It didn't matter. And, and she's been looking after her sister. Um, right. But that, that, that's not resolved at the end. Right. Like there, there's no reason for her to, to move on to that point. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, no, I, and I, I totally agree. Like the. Um, um, in fact, I said, uh, I wrote down here, 
Um, oh God, Frilly Pink is the most cliche rich girl I've ever seen. Um, <laughs> oh, and she's yeah. just that, yes. And, and I think you're absolutely right. Like, um, I think it is absolutely playing to that cliche in a very comforting way. Where it's like, we don't need to really vary this. We don't need to change things around because it fits into this story perfectly. Um, and I also appreciate that they, they address that a little bit. Like, I, I love that scene later on where, uh, <laughs> where Oko goes to, to, to the, the inn that is, you know, the size of the Empire State Building. Um, sure. And <laughs> starts going around and goes into the girl's room. And you see that she's watching Oko. And then runs over to her chair, plops down like she's always been reading. Like, like yeah. this is just oh, you know, Oko happens to be here. Oh, I wouldn't possibly have known. Um, in, in her giant library. <laughs> like, I know. I was just like, first of all, I'm watching this. I'm like going, this is an inn as she's going up the elevator, yeah, yeah. Out with the, over the landscape. You know, like the kingdom of. <laughs> And going into that massive library, and and I'm like going, can I have that food library? Yeah, Just, you know, <laughs> can I have who, that? Who access? knew that running a traditional Japanese inn was like running a casino in Las Vegas? Yeah, <laughs> who knew? <laughs> and that's the thing. And, and obviously, they're they're playing a bit off of commercialization of the hotel industry and so mm -hmm. forth, and how that you know, yeah. little bit. Yeah. Um, but no, it's, it's interesting. I mean, to me. Um, you know, she's very much that character. Like you said, her dad is like the dad from Totoro, uh, basically. The mom is, you know, um, Starsha, basically. Um, um, one of her classmates, I swear, was pulled right, right out of Pretty Cure. Um, like, it's almost it's just the, the character, the Pretty Cure character design is very, very close there. And oh, I'm sorry, easily. That, that, that little demon kid is straight out of Inuyasha. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah, it, it could be uh, Shippo. Shippo, exactly. Shippo with little horn. Yep. Yeah. Although I liked his casual attitude of just eating everything, yeah. where he's just like, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you might want to go over there. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. Um, he gets in the car and, and tells Oko the most important thing. Yeah, the the date has already been set, and he's just like. What? <laughs> yeah. And he's just sitting there, just like, yeah, date's been set. No, <laughs> Um, very blasé that whole thing. Yeah, but it's it's interesting how very um, um, how much this is clearly like pulling from anime stereotypes, I guess would be the the, the, the the right term, um, but in ways that work in their story. Um, the uh, the the young boy who is dealing with the loss of, of his mom, um, he's straight of like Gundam Seed, um, just very much Kira Yamato, and. It's weird. Normally, I would I would kind of turn up my nose at this, but I think they, they made it work really well um, in just the overall feel of um, uh, uh, of the work. But it's also interesting, like how it it also plays around with some things. Um, you know, she's always wearing jeans. Um, she, you know, I can't recall the last time I was introduced to a little girl character in anime who wasn't wearing a skirt or a dress. It's just such a thing visually that she's a girl, so she's wearing a skirt or she's wearing a dress. And unless she's, like, the tomboy uh, of the group. Right, I was going to say, you yeah. do have the, the, the plot point where you get that, where mm -hmm. she wears pants and she's rough and tumble, and she's specifically the character tomboy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Versus, yeah, a lot of the time, most of the young kids are wearing, sometimes they're wearing shorts, but, yeah, mm -hmm. most of the time it's a something short, skirt or shorts, but it's... Yeah, it's very kitty. Yeah, and it's interesting because, like, um, um, I, and I, I love the fact that it doesn't, it doesn't feel like they're like deliberately trying to make her look like a tomboy or adult or anything like that. It's just kids also wear this kind of thing, you know. Yeah. It, it, it's just that, yeah. um, and like it, it, it worked on her. Um, I also well, loved. Well, it was sort of vaguely not tropey. Right. Exactly. You know, so it's like, oh, she's wearing pants. She's a tomboy. Well, oh, he isn't. <laughs> Mm -hmm. well, yeah, especially oh, when oh she, she okay. What is she the then? It's like, haha, -ha, see? Mm -hmm. yeah, a little corner turn there. She sees the spider and all the lizards, and she's yeah. just ah! this terrified expression. I'm like, hey. Yeah. <laughs> so she's not just walking over and picking them up and being like, yeah, lizards, <laughs> bug, <laughs> uh, fun. I'm a prototypical tomboy. No, she's very, no. She's very stereotypically girly in those, those situations. Yeah. 
Um, and I also actually want to call out the fact that I really appreciate how her voice actor handled those moments where she didn't do like the really shrill anime girl scream. Um, yes. She's like, ah, you know, whatever. Um, you, you could very easily turn that into sort of ear splitting. Um, but it was just, you know, that, that surprise, uh, which was nice. I don't um, know what it is that I have, I, why I get notices of them, but it's all these, I get these notices that are voice actors' birthdays. Mm. I got one yesterday. <laughs> and there was Oko, because it shows the voice ah. actor or actress, and then a screen of all of the mm. characters they play. There's Oko. Her voice actress just celebrated her 16th birthday. Wow. So... She's really yeah. only like four or five <laughs> yeah. years older than Oko. Yeah. It's just like, mm. wow. Wow. Yeah, yeah. This actress, she had already like 10 different character parts that she's played by 16. Dang. So, yeah, so she would have been like 13 when she recorded that. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, damn. Yeah. <laughs> Thumbs up. Um, Can I have that luck? Although yeah. I don't think I'd play a good small girl. <laughs> <laughs> that would be too shocking. Exactly. Um, it is also interesting, this stuff, like like the little hints you have about, like you were saying about the Rio Khan culture and service and so forth. Um, I love the fact that when uh, Oko shows up, you know, she's at the entrance being, you know, um, welcomed by the other staff members. And her grandmother shows up escorting guests in and she does not run up to her granddaughter and welcome her she does not you know do anything like that she's with a freaking set of guests and so she is going to finish that job before she you know deals with her daughter or her granddaughter um and it was and again and nobody like points that out nobody talks about it that's just what you do um which was also interesting that you get the the moment where you know she's got the the boy ghost is like get out of the way mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> you're in the way yeah. she's like what oh okay <laughs> yeah like she is truly, truly. not yeah. di dialed into how her grandmother runs the Rio Khan. Mm -hmm. even though her parent you know what i mean it's like this isn't some again it's not like hanasaku where you've got obviously the mother and daughter are estranged Mm -hmm. So the granddaughter has basically no idea. She knows her grandmother runs a Ryokan, but she has no idea what goes on there. Mm -hmm. Here well, we've got we've got the you know the 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 parents. They visit the grandmother, so you know what I mean. Oko knows what's going on with the Ryokan, but she's she's on the other side of it. She's inside and it doesn't really doesn't dial into her, mm -hmm. except for that moment where it's like get out of the way. Mm. <laughs> at, the, at the very beginning. At the very beginning of it, you know, she's sitting there watching the ceremony, the spring ceremony, mm -hmm. uh, the, the the hot spring ceremony, and you know the, the the story behind it, and she's totally bored, and she just wants to go home, mm -hmm. and she doesn't really care. So this, you know, obviously, so yeah, she's not dialed into it because she doesn't really care. She wants to go back to her city where there's no bugs and salamanders, and mm -hmm. you know goes flicking boogers at her and you know whatnot so, civilization you know, yeah. civilization where nobody flicks boogers at me you know kind mm. of thing and it but you know she has no interest like there is zero like mm. she doesn't care and the only interest she shows is when her parents say oh well we had wanted to be mm. the pair up up on the up, up on the stage and she's like oh yeah. really and the mother does the little movement yeah um yeah you know and she's kind of entranced by the you know oko is kind of like oh that's actually kind of cool i guess mm -hmm. and you know kind of a thing and as they're driving away you know he's saying you know oh we didn't get a chance to see your your grandmother and then you know of course all hell breaks loose <laughs> she somehow winds up on the top of a car mm -hmm. i'm not sure exactly how that happened but because yeah. Ori oh, oribo yeah. she alludes to the fact that oribo somehow gently gets her down to that spot yeah. but you look at the roof of that uh, car there was nothing damn well gentle about that that was a human body splat in the top of a car yeah how she came out pretty okay i don't know yeah. i will say it is one of the few times i can think where you actually have your core character protagonist actually encounter the people that are involved in the fatal accident 
Yes. Almost every other time you see somebody get <clears throat> splatted, it's like a random guy in a truck, and maybe sometimes you see him go, oh, and then <laughs> the terror happens, and that's the last you ever see of it. Yeah. And yet they brought yeah, this what? up and dealt with it in, in yeah, such an really not... interest, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. wow, what would you do if yeah. you encountered somebody who totally, you know, was not trying to do what happened? He wasn't mm-hmm. trying to kill anybody. Yeah. And you have to it, internalize the fact that this is not a bad person. This mm-hmm. is things that happen bad to that person and then bad to you, and they are related, but they're not fault-driven mm-hmm. in, in the greater right. sense of you You purposely did something to yeah. you. So it's like, wow, I've not seen too many situations like that. Yeah. So so in that scene, that wonderful scene where she runs over to Frilly Pink and gets help, she comes mm-hmm. back and they're making the thing and he's enjoying it. And then you get more of the backstory. Oh, his entire kidney's taken out, most of his pancreas. And then I'm like going, no, no, that's, that's not, no. Mm-hmm. And then it gets further in, and, that, and and the grandmother's checking the registry, and yeah. You know, then suddenly you're just, you're just like you know you're just like <sighs> pause. <laughs> that is where that I think was done beautifully because you have this sort of crescendo. Yeah. You're, you're building, you're building. Oh, he's not really enjoying things. He can't have salt. It's building, it's building. I'm going to do what I need to do for the guest. It's building, it's yeah. building, it's building. He loves the food. This is awesome. Bum, bum, bum. Oh, look at the oh. name in the register. Like, yep. oh, oh, you're going to take my, like, riding on the wave of, like, she's learned service. <laughs> Boom! And just yep. dump the whole thing on the rocks, like, oh! And, and here's what I love about that. Um... If it had just been him and his wife, and he's all banged up, I might have guessed that 15 minutes earlier. But the fact that the story's about his son, you're like, oh, that's what all this is about. Like, we're just dealing with that, you know, fine. And then, no, no, there's this other, whole other layer to it, which is brilliant misdirection. Yeah. Um, not and not ham-fisted misdirection because there are no. plenty enough no. examples no. Yeah. in anime where you just like have a random character show up and you're like, what is that? And then you get snapped back to the whatever they're trying to drive at. And you're like, oh, that was kind of poor, poorly segued. Yeah. But this yep. was, yeah. I mean, it's just like, wow. And, and a good example of, of the subtlety um, um, when Frilly Pink gives her the 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 papers at the end and, and the, the menu and all that. Um, uh, she, uh, uh, she takes it down to the, the chef and he comments on how, oh, this is going to be easy to make because of all the stickies. Yeah. And you saw the sticky she was putting in, like the first time you meet her, she's preparing all this stuff. You got all these stickies all over the place. I'm like that visual reference. Nobody said I like to sticky things, but just having all that in gives you that extra little bit of, oh, she actually cared enough to actually yeah. put in all of this, this, this work. Love it, love it. Um, and, and I think it's you know it really gives a good quality for for the 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 storyline and for the the people who are you know visualizing how this is going to come together as an anime mm-hmm. when they don't need to say that. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, mm-hmm. he doesn't flip it open and go, "Oh, thank goodness, it's indexed with all of these <laughs> sticky notes." Like, you don't need to hit it. A friend really yeah. Just, uh, knew you don't need to punch doing. me in the face. Mm-hmm. You've shown me the visual, and then you just move on with it. It's like, oh. Thank you. That's a quality mm-hmm. act right there. You're like, I infer what those are and what the backstory is. That you didn't even need to say a word. You're like, oh, there's a lot of care involved. And and that's the other thing I like about this is that you know if you show this to a kid, um, you know they're gonna follow the main plot. They don't need that detail, right? right? If they don't, if they miss that, that's fine. It doesn't prevent them from understanding the plot. It's something that on their third watching or fifth watching they can see. Oh, look, stickies. That's a thing. You know. It's, it's great. Um, and the director of this um, worked at Studio Ghibli for years, by the way. Um, he was a long Could time. Could explain the father's look there. Yeah, exactly. Um, in fact, the end credits is all like his storyboards, and they're all like Studio Ghibli-style storyboards. Um, which is... Really, it, so he, here's an interesting I, thing. Yeah, go ahead. I was just going to say, when the storyboards came up and I was watching them and, and you know, with the credit scene, I was just like, oh, there's going to be something at the end. Mm-hmm. There might be an end credit scene because it really felt that way to me yeah. somehow. Yeah, I, I, I watched it all the way through, through, through the same through kind of thing. Yeah. I'm like, okay, is there going to be a surprise plot? <laughs> so there's, there's a payoff here. Mm-hmm. 
parents show up. Um, you know the uh, um, as ghosts and you, you, not like like psychological <laughs> trauma ghosts. <That's> like, <laughs> we love you, honey. You're you're doing great. You're not actually alive, are you? <laughs> no, we're not. <laughs> oh, mm -hmm. Torture. Um, and actually, I want to get back to that in a second. Um, but I have to talk about it now. Um, one of the interesting <laughs> things about this is the is the treatment of the parents' ghosts. Um, I I found it really interesting that you you never know that she's seeing her parents' ghosts. For all you can tell, this is her in her mind. You know, the first time it's like a dream, right? She just wakes up. Um, and all these other things, it could very well be, you know, a child trying to deal with the trauma and imagining what their parents would do in this situation. Um, and so the way they layer that, I think, is very psychologically accurate, where initially she's just remembering you know, times in her life when she was spending time with her parents and crawling into that bed and, you know, them, whatever. And then right. later on, it's, it's them saying, okay, honey, now that this has gone on for a while, it's time for you to kind of process this and move on. Um, again, just very mature. Yeah, I, ha I hated, that. I hated that crawling into me. It's just like, oh, 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 yeah. oh, oh, oh. That's sad. Yeah, I mean, this isn't really happening. Why can't it really be happening? <laughs> can't this be a happy story? No. Yeah, and um, and, and to that point, I mean, I like I was surprised because they did a, a great job of having her fall asleep. Then she wakes up in the middle of the night, and you don't immediately realize she's not in the Rio Con anymore. It takes a few moments of going, wait, a different room. Wait, what's going on here? Oh, you know, it's a memory. Um, yeah, it's yeah. it's well done. Um, so here's the thing. Um, I, I don't know if the director worked on the TV series or not. Um, I'm not, I don't think he did. Let me, let me just double check, because um, that would be an interesting thing to, to find out. Um, uh, I've, see here. I've not even the, tried to uh, look the thing for about the that TV is series yet. The question. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Um, uh, looks like he did not. So... The reason it looks the way that, the way it looks is because of the the TV series, right? It's going to copy the style of the TV series. Right. If they had made this movie look like those storyboards, if they had given it the character Ooh. designs of a Studio Ghibli movie, wow. Do you think this would be like an instant classic? Would everyone be watching this movie now? If it was a Studio Ghibli production and mm -hmm. not just a look-alike, yeah, I think you probably would have had enough sort of you know street cred for the studio to mm. to make it one of one of the classic pieces. But mm. I, I don't think just aping the style of it would have made uh, a fantastic difference. Mm. Um, you know what I mean? It's like just the style alone doesn't get you doesn't get you there. But that's I the thing. Think by I... having a slightly different style, some elements like the father, yeah, uh, and then greater differences along the line help the story to stand, you know, by itself and not yeah. just under the shade of something else. But that's the thing. Like I, I think this would very easily you know fit alongside the Cat Returns and um, uh, you know uh, Tales from Earth C. Um, and, and other Studio Ghibli films. Um, you know, I think it has the, 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 the potential qualities of those things. I think it was, I think if it was more in the, I, I first of all, I think if, if it's presented with the style that we saw, the story horse style that we saw, mm. I think a lot of people would have had initial interest in it and going, wait, it's not Studio Ghibli, but it looks like Studio Ghibli. Mm. And I think there would have been an initial reaction to it, and I think it would probably have more name value simply because people would be like, wow, this looks like a stu studio game, but it isn't, and the director's kind of connected to it. Mm -hmm. It's kind of unique. I think if the story had been painter mm -hmm. and with that storyboard visuals, then I think you might, I don't know if it would be an instant classic, but I think mm -hmm. people would be talking about Oko's In like they would be talking about other anime where they would just be like, we're, the, the the name recognition would be instant. Mm -hmm. Where people would be like, "Oh, oh, goes in." Yeah, okay. Yeah, I get. It. Yeah. I hear that. 
Oh, it's, I just it makes me think of what is it, Mary the Witch from a couple of years ago. Mary the Witch's Flower, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean that got a lot of talk, and then as soon as it stopped making the rounds, I haven't heard anything else about it. I haven't mm -hmm. had a chance to see it, but it's like it just sort of dropped off, mm -hmm. and it's like something that is in the vein of Ghibli isn't necessarily you know i mean it's yeah. not gonna it's not gonna ride that very well but, although the story itself is quality enough to to get the attention but and, you know and, I mean? and i think that's what i'm saying is you know, mary mary Shelton got a lot more attention than alcos so you know would that have just given it that extra push to make it at least maybe a mary's scale know. yeah i don't know you know i think i i agree with steve that it, and as we we talked about some of the i think you would have to address some of the weaknesses in, in general, mm -hmm. in the plot, to tighten it up to a point that you can make it a Studio Ghibli mm -hmm. like film. Mm -hmm. and I mean, I think you this this is great the way that it is. I wouldn't, you know, because it is extant the way it is. I wouldn't go and change it, like mm -hmm. make a remake right. and then fix some of the weaknesses. I like the way it came out. Reboot. <laughs> I, I, I don't. I, don't reboot. I definitely don't think this one would get a reboot. But mm -hmm. you know what I mean. I, I think to have it have more momentum, mm -hmm. you would have to have made the story tighter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's again, that's not detracting. Yeah, this is a different, different guy, different studio, different mm -hmm. thing. This is not, you know. Yeah. And it's adapting a well-known property, so right. that's a different situation. You know, you're not going in and, and uh, as you're like an original story or you know, Kiki's Delivery Service is a single novel. That's a different right. thing you're trying to do. Agreed. Um, yeah, no, I think this is a it's a lovely film. I'm also intrigued by the amount of what looked to be rotoscoping in the um, the the dance sequence at the beginning of the end. Ants. Yeah, um, yeah. It definitely looked they were they that that looked like footage I've seen of actual people doing the, the whole thing. Um, but it, that, it didn't give that creep out. Feeling. No, not at all. Um, That's the thing. Mean, they, yeah. However, they did it. Whether it was you know actual true rotoscoping or they just spent a crap ton of time trying to get mm -hmm. the moves right. The fans yeah. moving, the hands out and around. Mm -hmm. They did not creep me out. They didn't yep. make it visually disjointed. Mm -hmm. They didn't make it stand out so different from the surrounding characters yeah. that you're like, I don't, I don't, you know, it doesn't do anything for me. It was well blended. So kudos to them how they you know, got the effect. I was going to say that at the dance, um, at the end, when they're doing the dance and and doing the storytelling, um, that's the Inuyasha moment that I had mm. with her character. You know, she's dressed up as the the wolf or dog mm. demon or whatever it was, and because uh, <clears throat> it's the red coat, the crazy white hair, mm. you know, the, <laughs> yep, on top, and you know, and I just, <laughs> I'm watching this, watching this, they're them doing the dance because they're the two heirs of the different Ryokans. And I'm like sitting there going, like going, God, she kind of looks like okay. She's happy that she's doing it. She's concentrating. She, ha you have that all that internal monologue about you know, oh, we're gonna see each other reincarnated in the future. We'll come back and blah blah blah. And as she's going along, she doesn't look. She, again, I didn't get creepy, but she just looked kind of just like, oh, okay. She kind of looks like the wild child that she could have could have been. I guess I don't know, but she I had like, I had that that wild. Um, on this essence to her as she's doing, as she's going through the dance and, and I'm just kind of like going where was that the entire rest of the movie because I, mm -hmm. I didn't get that for, for the rest of the movie mm -hmm. but uh, but you know when they did the dance and everyone's kind of moving on and, and things mm -hmm. and things like that and you know the dance was the you know the moving on point for everyone to, to leave and that's mm -hmm. I felt like the, the preparing for her to see everyone go away finally because that's the other thing is that that, that was as they were going through the through the movie, where towards the, end, the last quarter she stops seeing them all mm -hmm. the time. Yeah, yeah, like she's going through, and then suddenly mm -hmm. she's not seeing. Them. And 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 what, what's the Pixar movie with with all the different feelings? Um, Inside Out. Inside Out, and it sort of <laughs> reminded me a little bit of the scene mm -hmm. when her she had to leave her her imaginary. You know the imaginary friend behind mm -hmm. in the lost memories kind of thing, mm -hmm. and 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 move on. I'm like going, uh, all right, a little bit depressed here. <laughs> well, and, and I'm glad you brought that up because 
I found it really interesting. I, I think in a lot of other things, she wouldn't have seen them and we wouldn't have either. Right? Like, if she mm-hmm. would have stopped seeing them and they would have just been sort of out of sight, out of mind for the audience. But the fact that you see them yourself, you know they're still around, you know they're not just sort of fading in and out of existence right now. She just cannot see them. Oh, yeah. That's what made that hard. Which that last dance scene, I'm just like... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're moving cry. on. No, don't leave. No. <laughs> yeah. Keep flipping those boogers here, Rio. <laughs> yeah, just, just hang in there, kids. You'll be fine. Don't reincarnate yet. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, that's an interesting aspect, too, because that her not seeing the ghosts is also, you know, the pretty clear metaphor that she is not only getting further away from the trauma Mm -hmm. that led her to see the ghosts, but she's also becoming more of an adult. Yeah. She's getting older. She's Mm -hmm. learned more things. You know, she's now taking inhabiting this role as the junior hostess. And, and I mean, they're not, and I hate to say that because it just kills me. They're not as necessary in her life. Yeah. Like yeah, oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. oh, just tear my heart out mm-hmm. right here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. No, it's it's absolutely true. Um, it, it's it's one of the neat things about this film is that you watch it, you're like, oh, that's charming. Oh, that was really well assembled. Like they really thought through all the pieces of that. Of you know, th- th- this is why this is happening right now. You know, um, it's yeah. it's pretty impressive. Um, yeah. Um, <laughs> I still. I'm glad I didn't recommend a turkey. <laughs> yeah, no. Yay! Um, it, it, Legend the, of the Overfiend. Yay! Oh, what's wrong with that? <laughs> I'm like, what um, are other, to the kids. Other yeah, than, get all the whole family in there. There was one scene that was just very... Shows the difference between, you know, Japanese and American cultural values, where, you know, a um, girl goes in to give a drink to a female guest, and then the next day the female guest takes the preteen girl out shopping alone with her. And not a problem there. Not, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, like, yeah not, totally. Not, totally fine. You can just go off with a stranger. It'll be, it'll be totally cool. It's like, huh? Wow. I, I would not do that. Especially when said, said stranger is supposed to be a successful psychic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Again, <laughs> what, did, what did I say about weaknesses in this story? There are weaknesses here. Yep. Driving a Porsche. Yeah. So, yeah, so I was just like, you know, that particular character, I was just like going, God, that's some mad money if she's able to do all that, if just being a psychic reader. Because mm-hmm. let me tell you something. There's a psychic reader about a block and a half away this way, and it's in a dumpy apartment building. It's like one of those, I can read your palms. Arrow. You know, five minutes. Yeah. It'll be $25. Yeah, yeah, arrow. You know, it's just like mm-hmm. a pawn. And it's right next door to the pawn shop, you know. So mm-hmm. It's like, yeah. You know, I'm like going. I'm like going. Do psychics make more money? In Japan? Well, I don't. Know. I would imagine that but, there's but probably a, a, a tongue in cheek there involved in the, mm. the huckster element. Yes. Of psychic readings, yeah. etc. Yeah. Mm. That's I, been that goes all the way back to what was it? Nancy Reagan with her uh, consulting right. psychics <laughs> for what Ronnie should Eight. do in the White House. You know what I mean? That's that's an age old sort of deal for the con. Mm. Uh, <laughs> but it just it's. Certainly an interesting element of would you in a traditional Ryokan allow one of your employees, regardless of whether it's granddaughter, daughter, whoever the hell, but one of your employees to go with one of your guests just on a jaunt Mm -hmm. and then have the guest buy your employee (laughs) stuff? Like yeah. You know, if this was and, if this was Hanasaku, that would be the like hell would break loose. Mm. There would be no, no way in hell that would happen. <laughs> you know. Yeah, I know it's 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 interesting. And again, it's one of those things where, for the plot, I get it, but yeah, because yeah. in real life, that that Oko would never come back. <laughs> it, it would be a short anime. <laughs> She'd just get in the car and never come back. Well, no, this is Japan. She'd come back, but her grandmother would lay into her like there was no tomorrow. <laughs> what are you doing? This is a guest. This is a valued guest. You're you're endangering the reputation of our inn. You are, you know, flagrantly, you know, any number of horrible 
parade of horribles would would occur from that, and it would be it that that would be a, not a good place to be. That would be not an anime I want to watch. <laughs> like <laughs> thirty five minutes of berating a small child. <laughs> Thank you, no. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but thank you, yes, to Oko Zen. Um, that, that was a, a lovely little film. Yeah. It's a nice decompressing film from that. Exactly, <laughs> Even though yes. it still had sadness, there was emotional, yeah. there were feels in there. Mm -hmm. But it was nice decompressing from some of the more serious mm -hmm. aspects of Akira and Momotaro. Yeah. And, and actually, to that point, but before we totally move on, um, again, I appreciated the fact that like it did deal with, the, with that trauma in a fairly age-appropriate way. Like, when she's in that car and things are driving around, you know, she doesn't start screaming. She just starts hyperventilating. And, you know, and and I, I love that thing of being a kid and not wanting to be a bother. And, you know, just wanting to let this go on and, 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 and be a thing. But you're not able to process this. You just can't handle it. Yeah. 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 But, anyway, yeah. All goes in. Charming. Lovely. Woohoo.